While smart buildings have been around for more than a decade, most owners were viewed as reluctant buyers, primarily because the design and installation of a building with high-tech systems was seen as a cost-prohibitive venture. That mindset is starting to change in a big way. Joining me now with more information on this is Ron Zwerin. Hey, Ron. Hi, Allison. Chances are pretty good. You've heard of the term smart building. Well, a lot of you out there have probably heard that term as well. But guess what? It's now being replaced with another phrase, integrated building systems or IBS. Buildings that are essentially able to take care of or monitor themselves are now becoming a real attractive option for owners. We sat down with John Mazel, the publisher of Electrical Contractor magazine, and he tells us why IBS buildings are now considered the wave of the future. How are buildings different than they were just 10 years ago? In the past, where buildings have traditionally been thought of and, and looked at, and, and that's really where the, you know, the perception difference occurs, buildings have been thought of as a series of individual systems, each one individually optimized to provide whatever service they were going to be, HVAC. Uh, basically conditioned the air in, in, in the building. Communications probably was nothing more than a phone system. Uh, Datacom was computer. Uh, maybe with some sort of rudimentary uh, uh, network type thing. Uh, as I say, security and life safety system was probably a burglar alarm and maybe a smoke alarm and an enunciator to, to announce something that was going wrong. But the, main, the, the difference is they were individually optimized. And if you think of uh, that terminology in terms of uh, maybe of a farm and think of it as individual silos. You got one silo filled with corn, you got one with wheat, you got one with rye. They're all filled and they're all important, but they don't talk to one another. Today, the change is that a building is not looked at as a set of individually optimized components. It's really looked at and viewed as a series of systems interconnected, each connectively optimized to support in, and communicate with one another. And that's the real key in terms of how buildings are looked at today. The move from individual systems to combined integrated systems has become a streamlined process, mainly because technology is more advanced and affordable. This has led to a paradigm shift of sorts because now owners are the ones asking and in some case demanding an IBS building. So what's in it for the owner to demand this kind of an IBS building? First of all, our environmental concerns and con you know, uh, concerns, whether, whether it be the leads movement and that sort of thing. Uh, the, the, one of the second is, is simply energy conservation, energy awareness, energy efficiency uh, demands that the buildings become more interoperable, more interdependent uh, to provide a, a more cost-effective uh, service. Uh, the needs, uh, particularly since 9-11, uh, the needs for an integration of security, life safety systems into and to be able to communicate with overall building systems has increased dramatically. And the real bottom line from the owner's point of view is that they look at an integrated system, an IBS building, if you will, uh, as, as a true value-added proposition for their properties, where they can, they can demonstrably, measurably, and more importantly, probably saleably, which is not a good word, but it's, it's a more saleable proposition, that they're, they're able to present their properties as total state-of-the-art it increases the value, what they, can, what they can charge and retain for their tenants. All of this would not be possible without skilled electrical contractors. In fact, many building owners today insist on having the electrical contractor play a key role in design, function, and installation. Well, speaking of the electrical contractor, how, how has the role of the electrical contractor changed just in this short amount of time? It's being driven by a couple of different things. The first is the influx and the dramatic increase in design build activity on the part of the contractor. And design build is, uh, it's been around for a long time, but according to our and other research, other independent research, uh, shows that today well over 40% of the average electrical contractor's total revenue comes from their participation in design build projects. When you get to larger contractors, uh, more, more of the, the typical NECA contractor of, of 100 employees or more, um, about 37% of them say that it, it accounts for well over 80% of their total revenue. 
So the, the, the fact of their involvement of design build means from the owner's point of view is that the electrical contractor is meeting with the owner, with the architect, with the other members of the team at the very earliest stages of design and planning. They are intimately involved in the selection of particular systems and products that are going to be installed and, in, and designed into that project. So what kind of training does a NECA IBEW team bring to the table that's not garden variety, it's not just something you would just see anywhere out on the street? Well, first of all, the, the IBEW, the NECA apprentice, Joint Apprenticeship Training Program, uh, just to become a journeyman electrician is a, is a full five-year program. There is no other program anywhere like that in the industry. Others have shorter versions of it. Uh, IBEW, NECA, uh, NJATC, have and are developing specific programs to train electrical contractors uh, in the installation of all of the various not only traditional power which is where most people think it is but uh, in some of the most advanced sophisticated uh, low voltage areas it could be lawn works it could be Wi-Fi it could be a VOIP which is voice over internet protocol but uh, the most sophisticated security life safety systems and be that access control, be it um, uh, CCTV, uh, whatever it happens to be, uh, biometrics, they're being trained, uh, literally I believe it's a, about to the number of about 10,000 currently in, in the uh, NJTC training program at various levels to make sure that whether it's a low voltage application or whether it's a traditional power application that with with the IBEW NECA trained electrician and contractor the job will be done right and you can rest assured as an owner uh, that you will have minimal callbacks. Formal training is a key component when it comes to IBS buildings or any other electrical project for that matter primarily because installation and maintenance go hand in hand. If the electrical contractor is not highly trained, an owner may have issues on the installation end as well as the maintenance end. When we're talking about these buildings, why is it important to have the electrical contractor in charge sort of pushing all of the buttons? There's, a, there's an old adage in our, in our business, uh, and it's being driven by building owners in that a building owner would much rather prefer as close to single source responsibility for all of their building systems as possible. Now sometimes that, that it falls a little bit short of that, but they would like to have a single person or as close to that as possible be there. They really would not like to have five or six subcontractors running around their facility. Uh, the, the, we can use the term one uh, single source or as close to single source one of the uh, one of the adages in, in 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 the business is an owner really would prefer to have literally one throat to choke if something goes wrong because otherwise the the frankly the tendency is something goes wrong and the classic answer is he did it it's not just the owners who benefit from an ibs building tenants win as well primarily because it's a turnkey solution all the systems from electrical to security to water are running in conjunction with one another it's more efficient cost-effective and comfortable. And Allison, with NECA contractors on-site, maintenance is of little concern before and after the job is complete, primarily because they're there all the way around. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, thanks, Ron. We appreciate it. And coming up next on Electric TV, we're taking you up to the Pacific Northwest and inside one of the most environmentally conscious buildings anywhere in the U.S. Stay tuned. I don't know how to get electricity to the 200 workstations that are going into my new office building. I don't know how to supply the power to the lighting, security, and fire systems that will be inside, much less how to program the computers that will operate them. I just know I need it done on time and on budget and by people who know what they're doing. I just know I need a NECA contractor in charge of the prints and IBEW electricians wearing the tools. The IBEW NECA team 